to an extraordinary woman's guide to stepping into your next level. <laughs> so this can be used, this process it can be used at things like um, when you're setting New Year's resolutions, it can be used at the solstice. I'm personally using this for the winter solstice. It can be used for a birthday. Whenever you feel like, just a notebook, you are turning the page onto a new level, a new chapter, kind of that vibe that we all get on the new year, that moving into a new era, era of you. And normally with that comes a lot of reflection, a lot of looking at um, the things that you want that you don't already have. So. Let's think about kind of regular New Year's resolutions would be things like losing weight. You want to be thinner than you are. So you want something that you don't already have. You want um, more money, a better job, something that you don't already have. You want that man to come into your life, something that you don't already have. So we are starting that new chapter, that new phase, that new era of you in lack and in I am the person who I am right here, right now, in this moment, is somehow, some way, shape or form, not enough, okay? And that, for me, is like a big, massive no-no. I've just had a sandwich, excuse me. <laughs> I really feel like there's something there in the corner of my mouth, but there isn't, anyway. Anyway, random. <laughs> So, what I want to do is I want to take you through the process that I am using as I move towards the winter solstice, because the winter solstice is a very important period of time, and it is a period of time where we lock in the level, the frequency the vibration of the person that we are going to be for the next year. Um, and so for me, it's not about the New Year's resolution. It's not about the birthday. It's not about anything like that. It is all about the solstice. Because what I'm about is I'm about harnessing and using and reading and tuning into and aligning with the energy the energy of the universe, the energy of our planet, the energy of myself. That's what I am all about. And when we use this energy, when we use the momentum of the energy, it drives us forward much quicker and it's much easier. So I like to think of it like being on a, on, on a yacht um, and, is the yacht the right word? A boat with a sail. <laughs> And we can either turn the sail so that it captures the wind to push it across the sea, or we can maybe like just not use the sail and we won't, we won't gain the same ground as quickly and as easily as when we are harnessing the wind. So that's kind of me thinking about the energy. And so if we lock in with the winter solstice, the energy of who we are right now, then we almost get a head start on the year. Okay, so where I'm coming from with this is it's all about coming from a place of groundedness in who you are, coming from a place of strength, coming from a place of this really strong foundation that is locked in and it's set in place with the winter solstice. And to create a strong foundation for the rest of the year to flow from is really important because if you're on like some kind of flaky foundation, then that's when you're not gonna quite be able to kind of gain that momentum, gain that ground into the next journey around the sun, which is what, of course, we are moving in towards. That's what the winter solstice signifies. So let me just get to my page. <laughs> 
So, this is about grounding into who you are, who you have become in the last year. Because every single one of those experiences, every single one of those lessons, every single one of those um, connections, cords that you've cut and that you've released has helped you to become who you are right now. And focusing on that, reflecting on that, working out exactly who you are right now has to be that strong foundation for the year ahead. Reclaiming your power, reclaiming the knowing of who you are, reclaiming that extraordinary self, that powerful self of you right here, right now, in this moment, okay? It's not about looking outside at who you, who society thinks you should be, who your parents think you should be, who your husband, partner, whatever thinks you should be. It's not about that. It's about an inner knowing of who you already are that sets the foundational layer for your year ahead. So, that takes us to what has to be the first reflection. Now, it may be that you want to get a journal, it may be that you want to get a notebook, it may be that you want to really get started with this and really dig in. I have probably about four, maybe five pages of notes, of journaling, of really leaning into this. So, get quiet, get still. Get some um, beautiful music on in the background. There's there's a, a playlist that I found on Spotify called Yule Tidings. It's beautiful, beautiful music. And I've had that playing while I've been writing this stuff. I've had a gorgeous cup of tea, gorgeous cup of magic while I've really lent into that. And it really is about digging in and being open to all that you already are. And it's it's something that people find hard because we're so used to self-criticism. We're so used to believing that we're not enough, that when you sit down and you actually do what is in effect, I wanna say it's like your CV. It's like the CV of you as a person, not the CV of your work experiences and your work life. This is the CV of you as a person. What have you experienced? What have you been through? What have you learned? What do you know? What are you good at? What are your skill sets? What's everything about you? Because when you get that solid information, when you get clarity on who you are, you will find that you reclaim a lot of power you get this foundation right, you've got this strength, like this pillar of strength that runs through you because you know who you are. You don't need to be knocked by everybody else's opinions of you because you know who you are. You know what's right for you. You know what you, where you're starting the year from. You're starting the year from this, this woman of who you are already. The other really important part of claiming who you are, getting grounded in that knowledge, is that instead of just kind of like not knowing, instead of just being kind of flaky about it, you've got this certainty, you've got this knowing, you've got it written down. I am all of these things that, I'm all these things that I've written down in my book. I am all of those things. Look at all those goddamn things that I am. When you've got that clarity, that knowledge, okay, you also increase your ability to feel worthy of things in your life. Because when we just live a life where we just don't feel, think we're good enough, where we haven't been good enough at disciplining ourselves with food to get to the weight that we want to be, when we haven't been good enough at discipline, disciplining ourselves and looking after our money to have the bank balance that we want, etc, etc. There's this like unworthiness that you are kind of painting yourself with that 
we don't overcome unless we do this exercise. And this exercise is the start of not only that, old, that strong foundation that you can kind of push from, but it's also this strong foundation of worthiness. Look at all that you are. Look at how goddamn amazing you already are. Look at who you are. Look at who you have become in your lifetime. And yeah, there's been ups and there's been downs and there's been good times and bad times, but look at who you are. You have survived every one of them. You are a goddamn warrior. You are a goddamn extraordinary woman. So I'm not gonna give you any journal prompts. That's down to you to be led. Um, and to write it however you want. It might be that you want to do like a, a brainstorm kind of page where you just chuck all the things down. It might be where you want to start just writing paragraphs and just allowing your pen to flow. That's me. That's what I do. I start writing and then my pen just flows. If you want me to get you started, then write the header, who am I already? Or put it in the middle of your page. And start with your name, your age, your marital status, and then your human design. No, get rid of the marital status. Forget that bit. That will, that will flow out as you talk. So I am Gail Griffin. I am 47 years old and I am a 2-4 projector. And see where that leads you. That led me straight into talking about the projector side of things. So that's where I went straight away, straight into the projector side of things. So lean into that human design, okay? If you don't know your human design, do you know your star sign? Do you know anything about your star sign? If you don't know that, just literally, I am Gail Griffin. I'm 47 years old and I am a woman who? Let your pen do the work. Okay, so from this initial place of power, this initial foundation of who you absolutely know you are, who you already are. I want you to just take a moment and bring the energetics into that, okay? You are a human being. You, in that just simple phrase, shows how utterly amazing you are and how powerful you are because you actually use vibration and frequency to create your life. When we think about our physical reality, our physical reality is the past. By the time you know it's here, it's gone, okay? So to create the past, we need to be doing something in the present, okay? And the thing that you need to be doing in your present is thinking, feeling, and vibing at a certain belief to actually create it in the past. So in the same way, right, your body, when we think about dieting, when we think about body composition, your body is created through the foods that you eat. So you eat the foods, you train in the, in the gym and you do the workouts, and then your body, the physical reflection of that shows up in your body in time, okay? The way that you feel, the thoughts that you think show up in your physical reality in time, in exactly the same kind of way. So what you are thinking, what you are feeling is what is going to create your reality. You are that goddamn powerful. I am that goddamn powerful. Every single human being is that goddamn powerful. We just have forgotten how to harness and use that power. So with the knowledge of who you already are, mixed with this knowledge of your actual power, of you as a powerful human being, what do you want in your life? Let's start getting some clarity. And what we can do here is we can look back over the year and we can look back over the things that didn't feel good, the things that we didn't enjoy, 
And we can look back at those and pick those out and be like, aha, when that happened, I really wasn't enjoying that phase of the year. And that was because of this, that, and the other. And let's start pulling out those things that we don't like, okay? Let's start paying attention to how our body feels. Are you feeling healthy? Do you feel like you have an abundance of energy? Do you feel powerful? Do you feel strong? Do you want to feel powerful? Do you want to feel strong? Let's really lean into how you wanna feel physically, how you wanna feel mentally, how you wanna feel every single day and really focus in on those things. What are those things? What do they look like? How do they feel? How do you want to feel in your financial world? How do you want to feel in your physical health? How do you want to feel in your relationships? How do you want to feel in your um, general day-to-day -day life? How do you want to feel? Not what do you want to do? Not who do you want to be? Not do you want to get the next promotion? No, no, no. How do you want to feel every single God damn day of the next journey around the sun. How do you want to feel? Because you have the power when you get that clarity to bring that into your physical reality. And once we've got that and we've got that clarity, what thoughts do you think that contradict it. What thoughts when you said, I want to feel like I have more than enough money. What was that little voice that clicked in that went, yeah, but that'll never happen. Why? Why won't it ever happen? Let's lean into that. So that little voice is simply what is stopping you becoming all that you should be. That's the layers that you've built up around this perfect person that was born, who had everything that they ever needed. And then opinions and judgments and learnings and teachings and stuff kind of happened around us through school. We were indoctrinated into a system. And in, in that indoctrination, these things stuck on us and suppressed down our true self, hidden underneath these little little beliefs, little ideas, little opinions, okay? And that is what we are gonna overcome over the next year. Because you know how much you have already overcome. You know how much you have already learned. That sets you up for true success in the year to come. And you can set goals. You can set as many goals as you want. But I want you to come at this from this place. And when the winter solstice turn flicks over, I will be holding the level of who I am. I will be holding the frequency of who I already am because I have that clarity. It's not about who I'm going to become. It's not about who I will be. It's not about next year, the year after, whatever, two months. It's not. It's about locking in the person that 2023 created, the person that I have become. It's about locking in, trusting that, feeling worthy in that, feeling strong, and knowing that that woman can do anything in 20.